Hey everyone, today I want to talk about common mistakes that dungeon masters make. There's a lot of stuff that a dungeon master has to keep tabs on, and it's easy to neglect some things or do some things that make the game a little less enjoyable for the players at the table. So let's run through those and make sure we're getting the most out of the experience for everybody. The first thing that you hear a lot about is railroading, and you, you'll hear a lot of people talking about sandbox campaigns versus railroad campaigns. Uh, I, I'll do another video where I get into some of the pitfalls of sandboxes in particular. What I'm talking about is really, as a DM, you're spending a lot of time prepping the next session. And you get this great idea for the next encounter, and it's going to take place in this, this huge room with multiple levels, and there's a side tunnel that they can crawl through that'll take them up to the second level where they could get a better... Uh, position to to fight the creatures. Uh, there's a there's another wave of creatures that's hiding in a side cavern, and they're going to come running out to, to surprise them. There's a trap door that's going to come down. There's other things. You put all this work into everything that's going on, and you get to the point where we're ready to run that campaign, and maybe they have a, a magic spell or a scroll or some item or something. They come up with this great plan that allows them to avoid lots of the stuff that you put together and they they're able to defeat that encounter uh, much more quickly than you thought and the temptation as a dm is to deny them the ability to do those things they they may ask you know hey i'd like to do such and such and i think i could do this other thing and that would basically change the the dynamics of this encounter uh, and you know your your inclination because you put so much time and planning into this is that you've played it out a certain way in your head and that doesn't fit with the way that you wanted this to play out and so you have a, a bias that says no no there's a reason why that they shouldn't be able to do that uh, you have to resist that urge if the players are really being creative and they're using the tools at their disposal and are actually playing as their characters and not metagaming or anything like that but they're actually playing as their characters and using their abilities to defeat the encounter that you created have at it let them do it i had an encounter i built one time where i they were running away from from some uh guards from the town that they were just in and they were trying to escape and they came upon a river and it was it was a raging river and about uh you know 40 50 feet across so it was too far for them to jump and it was moving too fast for them to just walk through and and i was like okay here's where you go and i had mapped out a whole bunch of stuff that they could do some potential things that they could do to try to get across this river they basically got to the river and one of the characters had the ability to control water and um, and within the rules there were there were certain things that they could do that basically allowed them to simply move everybody across this river. They were able to control the water and levitate and they used some of their other things to one by one get everybody over this river and instead of this big complicated encounter where they were going to have to stand their ground and fight against these guards and, and all this stuff, they just figured out another way through it and it took a fraction of the time to do it and they were done. And great I, I couldn't have been happier you know yes i put in a lot of work but the players were enjoying the game so much and were so into their characters that they found a better way to get through it than i had come up with and that to me is a, is a greater reward than actually following my railroaded path that i had come up with so be very careful as a dm that you don't make decisions that force them to follow your your idea of how it should go down let them come up with their own ideas the next thing is uh, skill checks without risk. This one is, is a big one. This Skill checks are, are in many ways are like playing poker. You, you don't want to necessarily ask for skill checks for everything because there's a lot of things that you don't really need a skill check for. But you don't want to only ask for skill checks when there's a big consequence for it because then they'll know that if you're asking for a skill check, this must be serious. So you have to try to ask for the skill checks at different times so that they don't really know whether it was really important to get the skill check. But the key is that even in those cases where the skill check is not really necessary, if you're asking for it because you're kind of bluffing them and making them think that there's more consequences there, you need to have a risk associated with it. There has to be a consequence if they don't get it because it's always the possibility that they say they want to climb on top of the rock to get a better view. And the rock is only, you know, a few feet tall. 
this is not something that would require a skill check or a strength check or anything like that to try to climb on top of this rock. But because you want to make sure that you are keeping things real and that later on, if they do ask for, if there's something they want to do and you do ask for a skill check, you want them to, you know, be unsure as to whether that skill check is going to have serious consequences. Uh, so you've got to ask for skill checks at these other times too. So you ask for the skill check and lo and behold, they, they roll a two. And now what do you do? Because this is a, an activity that really doesn't, take very much they they should have automatically succeeded at climbing on top of this rock you asked for a skill check just to kind of keep it interesting and now they failed and so you have to decide what is the consequence of that and you know it doesn't have to be anything substantial but maybe they fall they take a couple points of damage you roll a d4 and say they take some bludgeoning damage or you can keep it interesting say they hit their head on a rock and you can honestly take the the whole adventure in a different direction because now they've been knocked unconscious and there's there's some kind of injuries that they have to try to get fixed and it completely changes what they needed to do as long as you're prepared to run that part of the adventure as well. You could always set the the uh, difficulty level for the challenge to be so low that even if they roll a two, they still succeed. But then they know that you didn't really need them to roll a skill check. And that to me is not as interesting as following through and saying if they fail a skill check, there was some risk there. And here's what we're going to do instead. So make sure that when you ask for those skill checks, you are always have a consequence that's going to happen if they if they don't make the check and you're prepared to run in those directions for whatever it is it do doesn't have to be huge but you always have some kind of consequence the other thing is combat combat to me is uh it can be fun uh it's probably my least favorite part of the game because it very often turns into people just pounding on bags of hit points and we go from person to person roll the dice how much damage roll the dice how much damage roll the dice how much damage and there's not much interesting to it and there's obviously other things and we'll talk in other videos about how to make combat more interesting and how to make it run faster and with movement and using uh, multiple waves of creatures and setting timers and having other things going on like traps that are being triggered all kinds of things that you can do to to up the stakes and keep it interesting but in a lot of cases, you're fighting some creature, especially if it's like one large creature and everybody's kind of converging, where it just turns into a, a case of what's the point. We're just going around in circles and we're all taking our turns and we're all hitting this creature and eventually we're going to defeat this creature. And in those cases, you as the DM have to recognize when you've gotten to that point where you're just now pounding on these creatures and you need to say, okay, we're going to end this combat. We've defeated half the the goblins and you know you've you can tell that the encounter has kind of bogged down and it's just monotonous at this point. Have the rest of the goblins run away or surrender and uh, you know maybe that in, opens it up to where they could try to interrogate some of them or something like that. Uh, if you're fighting like a large creature, uh, you know maybe you uh, fudge some uh, some how much HP that they have left and you know they take a little damage you, you you increase the curve of how quickly this this creature takes damage so that you know normally they would go around another three rounds you're going to get this creature done in the next round or a round and a half or something like that so make sure you recognize when the the combat has reached its point where it's just not enjoyable anymore and it's just about pounding on a bag of hit points uh, once you're at that point, do whatever steps you need to do to wrap it up quickly so you can get back to the rest of the game. Don't sit there spending the next 15 minutes with everybody just rolling dice and, and hitting a creature just, just to do it because that's not the enjoyable part. And then the last one I have is this is probably the biggest one. For any DM out there, make sure you understand the player goals. Everybody that plays the game has something that they would like for their character. Sometimes they just want to fight. They want to be able to, to get into combat and they want to rage. They want to frenzy and they just want to beat up on things. Others might be wizards and they're, they're trying to earn some sort of credibility to get them into the wizard school. And so in order to do that, they've got to collect scrolls or, or spell books or things like that to, to help increase their credibility so they can accomplish that goal. A ranger might be seeking some uh, some animal or seeking uh, something from their past or some clues about where they came from. There could be any number of things, whatever motivations the players have set up for their characters. Make sure you as the DM understand what those things are 
and make sure you include those in the game. If you go through an entire campaign and you have a wizard that has been desperately trying to find books about wizarding and you go through an entire campaign and you never had them in a library where they found books or when they did find books they said they asked are any of these books about you know this the school of of you know teleportation magic or anything like that and and you say no none of those books match then that player is not getting what out of the game what they really wanted to and ultimately that is your role as a dm all the jokes that get made about how dms are trying to kill the party and everything those are just jokes they're just they're just fun and it's kind of this uh, interesting adversarial relationship that you establish with your players but in reality the dm is there to make sure everybody at the table is having a good time and the way that they're going to have a good time is if the dm understands what those players want for their characters and you find ways to incorporate that into the campaign that you're running and if you can do that then you are going to have a great table and you're going to have people that really want to come back because they know that they're going to get out of it what they want out of out of your games I hope you enjoyed the video. I uh, hope you got something out of it and it was interesting. If you are a DM and you're running some games, please think about these things and try to avoid uh, making these same mistakes so that you can have more enjoyable campaigns and uh, players that want to come back and play with you again. So until next time, take care.